Welcome back. I, is this file creepy enough? Am I doing it right? <laughs> You're too cute for it. You don't look like you have a tortured childhood. Okay, maybe maybe your dad was mean to you and didn't get you. I wish I had a lighter. <laughs> And then just hold a creepy smile and just to hold a lighter, to hold a flame while you guys introduce yourselves. But... The sequel's called Frown. The... This where the entity flips it around and now they're angry all the time. Let's turn it upside down. Oh, uh, shit. Yeah, before, before we dive into all the spoilers, dude, thank you guys. This is, this is crazy. This is groundbreaking. It's historical. Noah and Sean <laughs> on the podcast at the same time. We have a long history. No, uh, Sean and I going back to the Shakedown, which is what inevitably became Critical, because believe it or not, the Shakedown is a pretty popular name on the internet. And <laughs> Noah and I through VHS Mess, and uh, now back here on Critical. So this is this is so cool for me. I hope it's and I think it's cool for the two of you guys. So uh, welcome. Uh, I'm gonna say Sean. Let's say Sean. Let, Say your piece first. Easy for me to say, pal. <laughs> Welcome aboard, brother. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, man. Uh, yeah, I'm pumped to be on here. And it's crazy that as long as we've all known each other, this is the first time the three of us have been on a podcast together. It's kind of it's it's kind of crazy for real. I don't know how how that could happen, but yeah. Either way, I'm excited to uh, make history with you guys, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking about this movie. Um, I'm just gonna get it out the way right now. I, oh, 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 that's <laughs> <He's> fire! <got laughs> I love it, dude. It goes really well with that Raiders hat, bro. I got it. Hey, say. that's right. It that's great right. together, bro. <laughs> it goes great together. You got but the yeah, cheap dude, pop. I'm gonna pass the mic to pass the mic to Noah, bro. But you yeah, say all right. Word. Well, I'll say this is way better to do this than get my ass beat by Sean in an indie short film. <laughs> I like yeah, this I enjoy a lot this more, more too, believe it or not. Yeah. I and Kevin makes three, yes. Uh mm -hmm. <laughs> some of you won't know what we're talking about. And One you'll just have to find the Blue House YouTube channel to find our old <laughs> short film from the Columbus forty eight hour film festival. But yes, we know a thing or two about indie horror because we've made a thing or two in the indie horror genre safe to say also check out mort's big day and that is not yeah. the not nearly the end of my shameless plug so don't get your hopes up but that's the end for now uh yeah no uh, no no stunts needed in this no. particular episode although i think you could have played uh pretty well in this smile movie i don't think you would have gotten hurt very much oh, and i would have let them slash my throat i don't know <laughs> You would have been You'd pushing be like, Kill for me. it. Kill me. What's your <laughs> pussies? Come on. Exactly. There you Gotta go. Make so, it look real. Yeah, Gotta make you. it look real. Oh shit! It is real. I'm dead. See. <laughs> I'm dead now. Try to make me and take me into a coma instead. Noah is the reason it's so hard for wrestlers <laughs> to get insurance because he's he's like hey, it's got to look real, brother. It's like, dude, no, it doesn't. I, That's what the editing's I, for. It it will look real. I promise. No, you gotta film, hit me with everything you got, brother. <laughs> I mean, I, ta I talked to Kev about this. I had to, I was filming a movie by myself in Arizona, and I was like, oh, it's a one-man show type of thing almost, and I had to stop myself because I was about to, like, really hurt myself a lot. Like, a lot. And, it's not and, good getting those calls, you know. Yeah. Your buddy and, in Arizona. I'm about to jump off this scaffold. Maybe don't. Like, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe have somebody yeah, and, there. Well, well, not just that, but I was filming the summer and I was like in a mask and, you know, like a thing, you know, behind me. And, and I, it was so hot and I was going to like locations where no one was around. So a few people were like, no, we have to know where you are. You know, I didn't want to be a Gabby Petito without the Brian Laundry. You know what I'm saying? When I'm just out there, you know, <laughs> sorry. That's, 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 that's okay. That's quite okay. I I have Justice a smooth segue to slide into. Insert smooth segue here. Um, well, but I think we should do the spoiler-free part now. So I'm going to go ahead and just say a couple of things about the movie. Because in order to really talk about it, we're going to have to spoil it 
virtually right away. We've already spoiled a little bit of it, but I didn't call out, draw, call attention to it. So if you missed that, good for you. But uh, let's just say I am a broken record on this channel when it comes to this. If you can see this movie on a discount night, <laughs> do it then. Otherwise, personally, I would wait to stream it. I am very excited about the franchise that I think this movie will build, so I will say that. But in general, the this to me left a lot to be desired. I, I didn't hate it. I didn't walk out of the theater angry, but I also had relatively low expectations coming in. So uh, if you listen to my uh, drive home thoughts, you know that I thought this movie was more... Yeah, that it was louder than it was scary. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's that. Those are my two cents. No, what about you? Without without any um, spoilers, what what do you think about the movie? Well, first off, you you mentioned the stream, like wait for streaming. Um, mm -hmm. I I did research after I watched it, you know, and and uh, you know Paramount presented this movie. Uh, it was from oh. Paramount, and they filmed it for seventeen million. They more than made back their budget in two weeks and made over a hundred million but um actually it was going to be only on Par paramount plus's streaming service and then they had so many good a uh, few good like test audiences and and, and they're like no let's just put this in the theaters exclusively and look how it blew up and now it's like yeah it's and they said the president of paramount or something said it has exceeded even their wildest expectations so it shows you people still want to go to the theater they want new ips you know there's something different about i feel like well you we can get into it later but other movies that are coming out same day like halloween ends on peacock and theaters like everybody that i've told that that movie's on peacock same day they choose to watch it first streaming and if you make it theater only you have to go yep I don't Except, know. Yeah, it, it, 100%. So uh, it would it will end up eventually on Paramount, which is where I yeah. think I think you know if you need to save money, I w I wouldn't mind waiting. But that was a very good strategy. Yeah. And again, we'll get into that later. But because we were talking in the pre-show about how this will probably beat Halloween in the box office, and mm -hmm. that is the main reason that I think it will. Whether or not it's a better movie, I think it's going to win in the box office strictly because of the peacock access because you're gonna have to really really like this movie to watch it in the comfort of your own home and then yeah. go pay more money to go watch it a second time in well the theater. i mean so if if smile would have just been on paramount plus and just you know kind of it would not have probably been as big as it is because there's just been some random new movie on a plus service you know people i don't know as, as as popular as popular as it is, I think enough people would have saw it on Paramount Plus. The yeah. word would have spread around, and that could have made from new subscribers. Like, I feel like right. it's a movie that people would have subscribed to That's true. the platform just to see. So I don't necessarily agree with that, but I do think it being in theaters does does boost its popularity quicker. Like people yeah. can just you know go see it, you know, and and you know it's a good movie to see in theaters because it is creepy and it is loud. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's what you go for, right? It's the, especially, it's like, I feel like it's horror movies and action movies. I mean, that's what yeah. you go to the theater mostly for is because, you know, that's the whole experience. It's the loud, big screen, like, I don't know. I think, I think it, I liked it a lot, um, personally. I think, I even go on record saying that as far as, like, original horror concept, like, it's, it's one of the best ones I've seen in a while, in my opinion. Like, it was not, like, the fact that you could take something as simple as a smile and make it terrifying, mm -hmm. I thought was pretty cool. You know, because like, I've always thought smiles were kind of creepy, depending on who it was coming from. Like, I've known people in my life that just have naturally creepy ass smiles, and I always thought it was kind of weird. But, and then the fact that they took this and like, did what they did with it, I thought it was pretty cool. Like, I was impressed. I've actually thought about going and seeing it a second time, but I think I'm gonna hold off, knowing that, especially now, knowing it's gonna be on Paramount Plus at some point. Like yeah. I'll just hold off, but I yeah, I was I liked it, dude. I thought it was pretty dope. This is going to be perfect because I think we're at, we have we're at the three yeah we're at the three levels of it because I know uh, I I think I know about where Noah's at. Some of my thoughts are already on record. This is going to be great because we're going to be able to cover 
probably all of the types of opinions that you can have about this movie. And something uh, just to mention, uh, Sean, I, I highly suggest when you get a chance that you watch Barbarian. Uh, yeah, because you mentioned, do. yeah, you mentioned something that I know that Noah will disagree with, but it's only because you haven't watched Barbarian yet, so it might not necessarily actually be a disagreement. But when talking about original horror concepts done well, uh, Barbarian just uh, kind of hit one out of the park, in it, my opinion. And it there might a lot be of, a pile drive smile. <laughs> pile drive smile. Yeah, I like the way yeah. you said that. Now, yeah. uh, now, and that's a great. You know, because I don't necessarily agree with that either, but I, I do I do give it a bunch of props for being like an incredibly original concept. And I would say I would I probably personally think that its concept is better than Smile, although yeah, the way that the movies have played out, Smile has made it set itself up to actually have sequels where. Uh, without yeah. spoiling Barbarian, I will just say uh, con conceptualizing a sequel is difficult um, at mm -hmm. present time. So well, and then Sean, you really have to go into Barbarian straight up cold. Like, don't read about it, or you just watch it. Yeah, the Barbarian. trailers. Where do I find this Barbarian at? It's in the theaters right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it was oh, number. It, it was number one movie like three weeks ago or something. Four weeks ago. You would, I think you, okay. as a storyteller too, like you would really like the vibe and kind of how they switch things around here and there. And uh, there's a particular person in there in the movie that just does an awesome job. I think you would get a kick out of the performance. So, yeah, I definitely need to check it out for sure. I think that's yeah. I think just that's my yeah. I think that's my thing about um smile. I feel like the perf maybe. You'll disagree with me, but I feel like their performances were just like, uh, like just like the main girl kind of, I don't know. Thought it was pretty flat. Why? Like sausage, you didn't like sausage bacon, dude? No. <laughs> or Sosha bacon or whatever her name is. <laughs> no, I like, wait, that's not, is that her name? I thought she was as like bland as, like, yeah, I thought she was as bland as the bacon at all. Sausage bacon, dude. Sauces yeah, bacon more Kevin like bacon I don't know. Is it? I was gonna make that as a joke. I was gonna say that. That's a real. Let me thing. just it's... say, it's hard and and it's hard to really feel sympathy for a main character when you're just getting just raw dogged by dream sequences and hallucinations constantly. <sighs> I mean, there was literally one time where I just said straight up out loud. Fuck dream sequences. I hate it. If I were <laughs> if I were president, I would try to put through a bill to eliminate it in all movies. See, this Fuck won't be the last time on Critical that you are all reminded that if you ever see Noah Nichols on the ballot, you shouldn't vote for him. Great friend. No. Complete Take dictator. <laughs> complete creative <laughs> yeah. dictator. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the other ads against me noah nichols wants to take away your dream sequences in horror movies did when you we know, know that we love that noah noah nichols wants all bad filmmakers to be put in the purge the yeah. purge only if he you voted, make bad art hey, you, have to... you know hey he voted against dream sequences every time hey young man remember that remember that movie where you saw that guy get his throat slit well, Noah wants to take away that. He wants to make you think that it's all real and not fake. We want to give you the dream sequences back. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> and somebody finds some great. old project where you had a dream sequence and they're like, yeah. ah, you've been canceled. Well, no, in no canceled. net, you did that. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, it's better than being canceled. You've done it. Well, I think that's an official nice entry point into the spoiler section because in order for us to really start talking about the likes and dislikes, you have to get right into the plot. And you mentioned the dream sequences, which is one of my biggest beefs in yes. in this thing. Final spoiler warning. Uh, yeah, the dream sequences, I, got, I, I made it a point, in my opinion, by the time there was a certain scene and it was when she took the knife with her into the doctor's office he did that shit and saw the crazy person the crazy dude um and then uh 
White Castle guy, uh, Harold Andor Kumar, uh, shows Cal up. Calpen, yeah, I know. I just <laughs> yeah. Calpen shows up, and then she stabs the dude. Yeah, and the then boom, but like, except not, dying. she yeah. left the car, and I'm like, that could have been so impactful if this wasn't yeah. the fourth time you did it. Like, yeah, I found myself just waiting, yeah. waiting for the reveal that it was yeah. all a dream. Yeah, which if if that in reality that would have made sense, like if she would let's just say she stabbed him one time and then ran out, and that was actually reality, that would have made sense. Like, oh shit. You didn't kill him, so he's still, like, the thing's hunting you, but you didn't want to kill him because you have heart. But no, they had to go over the top and, like, I'm killing you, I'm killing you. You're like, this is not real, this sucks, this is pointless. It's just to sort of being, oh, my God, she's in the car. Wow, I'm so shocked. <sighs> Sorry, I'm a little mad at that. No, this is, I, it's, I like the heat, I like the energy. And I do think we, we probably should take a few steps back and, and yeah. go over the plot, even though at this point, like, if you're still with us. I if think, I may, though. You jump in. Yeah, absolutely. I do have, <laughs> jump I do in have something to touch base on. So I'm actually on the opposite side as far as the dream sequence goes. So I do agree oh. that they can be overplayed. And I, I do I also popcorn. agree that they use them an awful lot. But I do feel like in certain, in certain concepts, they... they makes sense like for example if you think about how like terrified and haunted this chick is with what the trauma that she experienced yeah she's barely sleeping so hallucinations you know and just you know daydreams getting lost in her own thoughts like it kind of makes sense yeah in this scenario so like in this particular movie i wasn't mad about the dream sequences because it made sense to me yeah like i do agree with you like that can be a you know it's uh what's the word i'm looking for kind of a cop out in a lot yeah. of ways well because um, people do overuse the fuck out of those so i totally get what you're saying but in this particular movie i was like i said i wasn't mad about it because it made sense to me but, yeah yeah well i will say before we start at the beginning because i don't i want kev to run it back to the beginning but i will say the only one the only person who was truly traumatized and it was no joke was that poor little bastard child at his birthday party, Jackson. <laughs> because, oh, his, yeah. because his his sister, was, that was my favorite part, his sister was like, "You, Jackson's traumatized. And then when she's, but my favorite scene in the whole movie was when she's like, ah, fuck, and she's hitting in the, the car. car. And then it shows the kid like, ooh. <laughs> Dude, that was... Like when he opened the box, I didn't honestly know what to expect. My, my, my fiance the... called it, dude. She was like, "It's the cat." I'm like, yeah. "What?" And then, like, as soon as I look back at the screen, she's pulling the cat out the box. I'm like, "Oh shit!" Yeah, that was like, yeah, that, that was, was kind of yeah, yeah. As, that poor Jackson. Yeah, dude. As soon as the kid just stared at the box, it took a second, and I was like, "Oh wait!" And then I remembered the cat because you know, you know. That's a, that's a thing, you know, they're not going to point out the cat for no reason. And if they do, like, shame on you, you know, and we're going to we're gonna bitch about it for an hour on podcasts like these. If you yeah. if you talk about a cat going missing three times in five minutes and you don't pay that off, be Chekhov's cat here, yeah. uh, Schrodinger's cat. But that, <laughs> oh, the, I did, I loved that scene. Like, that was one yeah. of the moments that, like, I'm over here, like, doing my Rip Hamilton, Michael Jordan knockoff, <laughs> just, mm, yeah, like Hall. Yeah, yeah. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Dead mustache. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh my god. I have to say, I think that was probably one of my favorite scene too, man. Because like, we're we're fucked like, up, aren't we? Looked over, you see this? that chick sitting in the chair, that like smiling. That was by far one of my favorite creepy yeah. smiles in the whole movie. Like, yeah. That shit was well played. Yeah. yeah. And dude. then like her flipping out, falling to the glass and, table. I was like, and, yeah, that was. And then later on, that when scene her, hit home for sure. And then later on, and when the fiance with the favorite dialogue tree. Of my the whole movie when he goes did you kill mustache and she goes no it was the thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah it it has like an, an it, it reminded me of it follows this movie mm -hmm. and like that kind of a vibe um with the or like the ring but without the, without yeah. a phone call um, um especially Sean, when have they you seen the... it follows i have not I know what movie you're talking about, though. It was on my Netflix list forever, but I okay. never watched it. And what were you going to say, so, Kevin? I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, no, you're okay. It's just it, the, the about the It Follows thing. You know, it's, it's 
got this foreboding, just slow approaching monster. Or like I said, the ring. I, I thought of the ring when they start going over. He's like, well, you know, the detective, detective ex-boyfriend, which we have yet to discuss, um, mm. who was a very convenient character to this movie. Uh, thank yes. God she dated a former cop. Otherwise, yeah. so much of this movie does not happen. And my yeah. biggest gripe comes at the end when it comes yeah. to detective boyfriend. Well, and just her, her plan. This, this girl was very stupid. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm going all, I'm all over the place now. I was talking about. I just want to say real quick that like halfway through the movie, I called the ending. Like I knew yeah, was that was cool. what was going to happen. Like mm -hmm. I'm like, this is exactly what's going to happen. Yep, yeah. and he's going to sure see. Enough. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Same. And yep. And the that's bitch. Bitch should have just gotten an Air Airbnb a frame out in the desert, and no one's around. <laughs> Be like, I'll kill myself <laughs> out here. No one's around. Yo, you got the key code. That's it. Come in. Yes, we can just talk about that now. I think I we're here, we're at it, we're talking about it. I'm sure there are other parts. We'll go yeah, back we can in start, the timeline. We can start the ending and then go back. We, yeah, the we know uh, very briefly that this, you know, someone comes into her hospital with the smile, end games herself, which passes the curse on to is it Rose? Rose is our character. Yeah, Rose right? Cotter. And and so is. Rose, throughout her investigation, throughout the convenience of detective boyfriend, and that's what I had been talking about was the four minute thing. But through the convenient of uh, research of detective boy ex boyfriend, uh, she finds out that it, whoever witnesses the end gaming gets the curse passed to them. And so in her infinite wisdom. She decides to confront this demon in her childhood home. One of the very few places that a detective ex-boyfriend could ever possibly find her. If her actual goal, like Noah said, if her actual goal was to do this by herself, mm -hmm. she should not have gone to anywhere of personal or historical significance you should have gone out in the middle of nowhere where boyfriend had no chance to find her. It was bad yeah. enough that she thought she could just kill a monster that's in her brain with some fire. And that, like, that was good enough. I mean, I know it yeah. didn't happen, but the idea that she thought she had walked out of the house and went to reconnect. It was, uh, I was like, what? <laughs> like, you just said two minutes ago, your whole point was to die to make sure this didn't happen to um. anyone else. But yeah. so I was mad about all of it. I'm just like, what is this lady doing? Yeah. She, she, yeah, but I, I don't know. So that, that was just my beef with it was like, why do you go to a place? Uh, and like Sean had said about two thirds into the movie, I was like, oh man, the boy, ex-boyfriend guy is going to find her. And then that's how we're going to have a sequel because I just, yeah, once once I, she showed up at her mom's house, it's like okay, I know how this ends. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. I I, I was just gonna say I on top of you know like annoying being annoyed by that, I just want to know how much property tax Rose was paying for that shack out in the middle of nowhere for all those years. <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> like what's the point of that shit even existing? Like get a bulldozer up in there. Well, they mentioned it in the movie. Like the siblings wanted to tear it down. Oh, okay, I didn't sell yep. the property. But she refused to because of the, you know, childhood significance oh. of that place. Oh, okay, I remember that now. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. the only reason she kept it around. But she, you know what? She could have held a lot of. She could have at closet. least renovated it and yeah. made it like a nice Airbnb <laughs> hut, like made that cash money. I don't on the think side. she wanted to, dude. I, I think she genuinely liked keeping it as that creepy ass part of her past. I don't know. Chick had attachment issues, bro. Like yeah. I, I don't know. Like mm -hmm. it's this. The fact no. that she shows up there, that's where she decides to go. She's like, I have to beat this demon of my past if I want to right? end this thing. Then she I, goes there and talks to her creepy-ass dead mom and all that shit. It's like, whoa, dude. Yeah, that Although was, I thought that part was kind of cool. Like That was effective. I don't know, yeah. having that. And dude, is it just me? It was her dead mom kind of hot. Her like, mom for was a dead really Kind of. Not when she grew up like, to the on? monster. but <laughs> We saw, <laughs> yeah, well, they got a little weird there. It's like, damn, you new bold to come in Matumbo tall now. <laughs> they, <laughs> for that me, they nice, flashed her dude. death gaze too many times, like throughout the movie. That when they finally showed her, I just, yeah, I, oh, I couldn't, I couldn't look yeah. at her that way. But then once she got tall, then I, I was like, oh yeah, that's a tree I'd like to intro. climb. Like her, yeah. For sure, bro. I <laughs> see you, Kate. 
climbing mountains, dog. You said you like the intro, Did Sean? Did we lose Noah? Mm-hmm. What? No, Sean, you said you like the intro? Oh, I thought Noah froze. Mm-hmm. That's just just yeah, yeah, I did, I did. I, uh, yeah, I like the the fact that like she just walks up in her mom's room and it's OD as fuck. Like I thought that was kind of cool way to start yeah. the movie. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little different. It did let you wonder like, oh, what's this going, what's this going to be about, bro? Like I mean, obviously it's about creepy smiles, but the first thing you see is some chick OD on the bed. I'm like, oh, yeah, what this is going to lead to. Yeah. So I thought yeah. that was kind of cool, and then the fact that she's a therapist. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, and honestly, a lot of anyone I've known that is a therapist or is going to school to be a therapist, to be honest with you, bro, a lot of times they have some childhood trauma, bro. Yeah. They, they, they've been through some things that makes them want to pursue that career. So the fact that that was seemed very realistic to me, I thought was cool. Um, and the fact that her mom died pretty much OD'd and then she's like her patients like to you know, commit suicide. I was like, damn. And that was a lot a of dark shit happened suicide. in the stick in the first 10 minutes of the film. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I kind of dug it. I was like, this kind of dope. Yeah. So. That, that was effective for getting, I think that it was a very effective tool for getting people to invest in a character early because yeah. it's, yeah. uh, there was an old sketch I saw once way back in the day and I don't remember who did it, so I can't give it credit, but they made fun of Hollywood and they basically talked about, here's this rock. Um, and if we want, we found that if we want audiences to be invested in this rock, we nearly have to put them with a attractive female rock and two smaller children rocks and they'll instantly be invested like, Oh, I want good things to happen. So it's a common, it's like, uh, they, they wrote it. Someone wrote a whole book about it. The save the cat method where you do something, mm-hmm. one small scene that shows that your character is a good person. A, another version of, of doing that, another way of getting you to care about someone is just to put them through some bullshit early on and then you'll just start as an audience member start to feel bad for that character but fortunately for me our character started to be dumb and much like uh, in my barbarian review or our barbarian review it's like it frustrates me when movie happens because character does dumb thing um or when outcome is x because person did super dumb thing that they themselves said they were trying to avoid um which which was my my knock with that but i do i do appreciate that as well sean the realism uh or at least oh no i i appreciated that approach it all felt like it would make sense to me um someone in that position they set it up right with you're working so many hours we have to send you home like they made it so reasonable for everyone in her life to think she had just cracked right i mean that part i did enjoy Um, yeah rose was working a full 80 a week yeah yeah just she (laughs) needed to go to cedar point or something she had that hulk hogan brother schedule you know hulk Hogan (laughs) schedule brother yeah Uh, (laughs) she was going to japan to work dude she did 460 (laughs) surgeries in one year because of the trips to japan and math um and she was and and even when she was off she was still watching videos of the you know her patient killing herself and that is true. Yeah, she was very dedicated. She was all up in there, and I I do agree with Sean about the whole the the opening scene. I do like they did set the tone really well, and it was uneasy. So I did. They immediately kind of went in, and I don't correct me if I'm wrong, but they didn't they didn't really have like a extended credit sequence at all either. It just went right in it, right? Yeah, yeah. I think it just I jumped think, in. I think I, I was so. okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that sounds correct. Yeah, it got into it. Now, okay, here was a critique that I had, and at first I didn't like it. After sitting with it for a while, I'm I'm kind of on the fence. They didn't show a lot of the smile monster in this movie, um, which mm. in some movies, i.e. Alien, that is used to great effect. Someone has timed it. I want to say the actual xenomorph is in that movie like less than four minutes or something. It's crazy how little you actually see that movie. It makes sense with that kind of a crazy monster. Yeah. I thought it would have been, I mean, doing that creepy smile thing, they had people go into stadiums and stuff doing it. I thought that the smile could have been incorporated more. What did, Sean, what did you think? I'll, I'll ask you first. 
did you did you want to see more of that like me or do you think that it was more of a less is more approach with the smile monster you mean like the actual like huge morphed up monster that you saw at the end like not even necessarily that just people smiling in general like you know you had a couple moments when she was home alone where she would Mm -hmm. see like someone off in the shadow um but i just it it felt like you just didn't see this anyone with the creepy smile as often um Mm -hmm. that it was a lot of like her freaking out drinking wine by herself in the fridge i know eventually i think that is one of the scenes where she does see something but i just there were a lot of like scenes where the tension was built there was some great music going but you know i i I don't know i maybe maybe i'm wrong here did you think sean that you saw enough people smiling now that you pointed out i I can see that but like at the the more i think about it like i i think if we would have saw it much more it would have kind of softened it a bit like i feel like the less you see it when you do see it, it it impacts that much more you know what i'm saying like, I feel like if, you, if I was seeing it every, like, two or three minutes, it's not going to be as scary to yeah. me, like, halfway through the films because I've seen it so many fucking times. But, like, when you do see it, it's like, oh, fuck, there's that creepy-ass smile. You know, I don't know. It, it, to me, the pacing of it was fine. But I could see yeah. how someone would feel that way. Like, damn, and, I didn't see a whole lot of creepy smiles, bro. What the fuck am I paying for? Yeah, and what, you feel that way. yeah, and one of the taglines was something like, once you see it, it's too late. So you had to remember when the smile happens with the person – it's pretty much like you're dead or almost dead. Like you're going to die or they're going to die. Like, oh, so, yeah. so point. they would have done that all the time. It would have been like, oh my God, mass suicide. It would have been the wild. But uh, the, the scene that I really liked was what this therapist did it. With the therapist at the home. That was the fact. That was kind of cool. That was that one was, of the, yeah, yeah, that was up there with me. It's one of my favorite scenes when she just like, yeah. The therapist cracked that smile, and then like walked straight up over the couch, like it then, effortlessly it, walked it, over the couch. I'm like, holy shit! And she had that, that demon dope. voice. I was like, oh man, yeah. it's, it's building. The voice modulator work was cool when they'd slip in the demon yeah. voice. But I, yeah, when we were talking about dream sequences earlier, that was one that came in my head as one that I liked and one mm-hmm. that actually did get me. Uh, mm-hmm. it, admittedly, because and it was the way it was done with having her therapist say. Do, don't you think you should get that or however yeah. like which is already yeah which is already an odd that. thing to do right it's, it's like, an odd yep. thing to have a, a cordless phone even if you're in that field <laughs> also, I was like, yes. what the hell <laughs> yes yeah, so it's That's like I'm, I'm here uh unannounced for a forced therapy session and I, i'm gonna yeah. tell you that you should and interrupt it by answering this call so my my radar t- my spidey sense went off when yeah. she was like don't you think you should get that yeah and then you hear the voice and then the smile. i was like oh yeah i, I got cool. excited about that that scene. was dope i love that scene dude that was so much fun and that therapist did a really good job like with that scene because you know i mean just the creep I factor agree. was effective yeah i look forward to that watching that scene and that is something a second viewing that i'll look forward to now that i'll know when it was the creature uh, so that maybe there will be more clues that was there. Like, I can't wait to watch that scene again and see uh, and try to compare her behavior from earlier scenes versus what the creature kind of mimicked her as. Because uh, yeah. I, I am hoping uh, to see more clues. That usually is what happens with these movies like this. If they're done well, you go back a second time and you're like, okay, the clues were there. I just was looking elsewhere. A little bit of the, as uh, Lou would always say, the uh, the Kansas City shuffle, you know, <laughs> to quote from Lucky Number Slevin. Um, yeah, you know, Gilly, what, what's going on over classic. here, boys? Yeah, classic. Um, what else, Sean? What was one of your, we've, we've popped off a couple of our favorite scenes. What about you? What was a favorite for you? I mean, you guys, I mean, the ones you guys named were pretty much there for me, like the cat scene at the birthday party, uh, therapist, Cole, cold interview or cold therapy session whatever those are definitely probably my top two i mean i did like the scene where she showed up and started stabbing dude in the hospital i thought that was kind of cool and then her just being i don't know like those are probably my favorite scenes um the rest of it just i mean it was all it was overall like i said i really liked the movie but it it was easy for me to kind of pick the scenes that really stood out the most there wasn't like most of it was just like for a better for lack of better terms like a lot mm. of it was just build up 
yeah. when there were like those scenes where you we did get with the creepy smiles. I thought they were like effective. Yeah, like you that... know what I'm saying? Like the whole. I don't know. Yeah. I thought the dynamic with her husband was kind of weird. Like I don't. Know, I almost felt like she just should have been single. Like he didn't really add much to the story, dude. And then he was you mean the fiance like, dude? A train. Yeah, yeah, fiance dude. Yeah, I feel like he was just an unnecessary character. Like, what yeah. did he really accomplish, dude? Like, he was just kind of well, here and there, and then like just pretty much turned her, turned his back on her. Like, yeah, he was a con. Like, what kind of fiance is he, dude? Like, yeah. chicks, obviously something ain't right, and you're just like, like you're something wrong with him. Like, obviously, motherfucker. Like, why are you not trying to help? Like, you just out here writing her off. Like, if she would have been know. a lot, if she would have been a lot thicker, I think he would have given her a better chance. I think so. She was she was too much of a rail, so he was like, I'm out. I knew I knew he was going to be an ass as soon as I saw the character that was casted and I was actually hoping that I would be wrong because I hate seeing actors get typecasted but if you guys haven't watched the boys yet um, that fiance plays the character A Train and he's an asshole uh well that's uh, kind of a spoiler but it it is what it, it doesn't t- it doesn't take more than 10 minutes for you to find out he's an asshole in the inciting moment that starts the whole show so it's not a huge spoiler oh, damn. uh and so i was like oh fuck it's a train a i was like okay cool good to see this guy getting some movie roles but then in my head i'm like fuck is he's he's, he's gonna be kind of a shithead i bet and then of I, course he was um, i feel like not only was like sean was like what he said you know what's the point of him or but also it's like their chemistry was not that good at all. I mean, I didn't believe nah. them as together or had anything. I wonder. If, yeah, you're right. I mean, I think part of the bad chemistry was was by choice because mm-hmm. she is going back to her ex boyfriend. But again, as you guys pointed out, she could have just been single. Yeah, and her coworkers could have still very de- been very defensive and wanted him to leave she didn't have to be engaged like that's very that's typical behavior especially when you only get one side of the story so like when it's your friend and you see your friend's ex it's classic human behavior to just be standoffish and cold to them they don't need to be engaged to someone else so you can't really say oh he's there to drive her back to the arms of her ex-boyfriend like no you could have done that without him so really what was he there what was he there to do other than to i guess escalate her craziness yeah i mean he was just one more person that wrote her off as crazy i guess i mean but there wasn't any real i don't know like i feel like his role could have not existed and we would have been totally fine the movie would have went on and it was honestly yeah great yeah it it was wasted potential with him too because they didn't even do the smile bit with him and they totally could just about to say that yeah like why didn't they do that at all i mean i you imagine I'm, like she was like just waking up in the middle of the night like cuddling on dude's chest and like looks yeah. up and he's like fucking smiling at her like that yeah, would be kind of cool like they, they could have done like yeah. a creepy sexual thing like them in bed like doing some scene and then it turns into that thing that would have been cool i don't yeah, know yeah that's that a very good insane. point the monster you missed a great opportunity because there was some turmoil turmoil there so i'm sure she had some insecurities regarding the relationship yeah. so it, yeah then the monster could have been like you don't jerk me off well enough and then be like oh shit you're like my first girlfriend too hard take the rings off <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> you don't deserve this yeah, exactly so uh, yeah i think that's a missed opportunity i wouldn't be surprised to find out that there was a scene that had that that is on the cutting room floor because oh. it, it seems odd if we're you know if we're thinking about it but the filmmakers didn't you know like i yeah, i just fair. imagine they filmed it and it, it didn't work or they had to cut it for time oh, that's what i'm gonna tell myself at least yeah. i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt because but i because i agree with you the way it comes out with the finished product, you kind of do just feel like this was a character. It was an opportunity to add a recognizable face. Because even though yeah. uh, I'm in the minority on this panel, The Boys is a pretty pretty big show overall. Yeah. So there is it's some name he- recognition there. Yeah, uh, or at least face show. recognition. Because I, I can't even, unfortunately, I can't tell you the actor's name right now off the top of my head. He's the A-Train. But do you, I have a question for both of you. Since the, the movie was 
pretty long. It was like almost two hours long. Do you think, um, do you think it would warrant a second meeting? Do you think that they did anything where she's walking in a crowd of people or in the hospital and then you see maybe a smile in the background? Do you think they did Easter eggs like that or you don't think they did anything like that? Like, do you think that there they was like- They might have. I just didn't yeah. notice it the first watch. Yeah, so I was just wondering. Maybe I'm gonna watch again. Yeah. And specifically looking for shit like that, like yeah. little Easter eggs and things I might have missed the first time around. Yeah. So I'm hoping that's the case because I do agree with Kev to a degree. Like they could have factored in the smile a bit more. Like not necessarily a big moment, but like you would even mention maybe just background smiles, like a yeah. nurse walking by just in simple. the background smiling, yeah. looking her way. You know, just something like that would have been kind of cool. Give that sense of stalking. Little, little beats in here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just even if it's for the audience. And that's where, and I think here I am talking myself out of it a little bit. Because I guess it, if it's a monster that's in her mind, maybe it makes less sense to have a smile like behind her. Because like she can't see it. So, but again, mm -hmm. it's just so for the audience, you know, a lot of movies do that where, you know, we know what's coming. And that yeah. is the old Alfred, Hitch Alfred Hitchcock bomb under the table thing. Like when we right. know it's coming, it's scarier because the tension builds. And they did so much of that tension building that, and I'll be interested in my rewatch to look for that too, to be like, would would it have been better to, you know, ratchet it up while using some of the smile things? Because that's my thing. I get the tension and I do think there were times where it was done well. Um, but I, I expected things to kind of escalate. Um, and the, you know it did have that that blow off in in the house but um yeah i don't know I, I i'll be interested to see and i'm hoping to find you know a couple of michael myers-esque you know the shapes uh is somewhere like down in the hallway because i i think there might be a couple uh yeah. I'm, I'm hoping that there mm. are a couple um that we would go back and see yeah yeah i was just gonna say you reminded me kevin like they did do Michael Myers-esque things, now that I think of it, when she looked outside and that the person was staring at her from far away down in, like, um, the sidewalk from the hospital. Remember that? So oh, she yeah, was yeah. getting some creepy... So they, so you know what? There could have been crowd shots because if, if the monster or the smile was happening far away, like that... Yeah, that's where I'm, like... Like, so thematically, you know it would have been pretty cool to have had it in crowds. Like you just said, far away. And then in another background scene, a little bit later, it's in another crowd, but like slightly closer, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that way subconsciously, you know, you get that, like it's closing in on its prey kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that, that I hope to see in a second viewing, but also notes for how to improve the inevitable sequel. Cause as Noah said, this thing, uh, it, gonna did, do it. it did pretty good. So, uh, yeah. I expect in true Hollywood fashion them to rush a sequel out to be ready by next October. Cause that's, yeah, what, oh. that's what Hollywood does when we like one of these things. They're like, fuck it, dude, slap some duct tape on this bad boy. Let's get another one out. They're, they're probably speed running a script right now. Yeah. Like, you oh, know, yeah. get in. yeah. Did, did you like, guys you see what it's done in the box office? Get to right now. <laughs> We're gonna call it. Don't call it smile, too. Call it smiles. <laughs> Plural. Smiles. Smiles. Yes. Smile. But the S is a backwards wow. two. We're going to make 200 million in, three, in two days. Exactly. Or it's smiles with a Z. Um, just, just make the motherfuckers smile more. I... <laughs> <laughs> And the, the 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 third one will be like, smile, motherfuckers, and it'll be starring yeah. Sam Jackson. Can I? Can, that's funny that you said that because I, I just want to say like that scene where they, <laughs> yeah, we got too many smilers up in this motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> but um, there was a scene in the movie. Remember that scene where they saw the dude at the gas station, the Lebowski, and he was. Huh? No, go ahead. Yeah, the dude at the gas station. Go ahead. <laughs> the dude right. at the gas station who like was smiling at that old lady at the gas pump. Yeah, with that the was sh cool. garden shears. Yeah. yeah. So when it cut, they were like, "Oh, let's see. Oh my god!" And they like froze on him smiling. Is he smiling? There are these. Yes. There are these two dudes <laughs> in front of me, and they were talking throughout the whole movie. 
And the dude just goes, yeah, he's smiling like a motherfucker. <laughs> dude, that is the downside to going on a discount night. Like, everybody mm-hmm. acts like the $5 you spent means shit. And so they can just talk like they in their care. fucking living room. And I'm like, God damn you. Be quiet, please. Be quiet. Right. Oh my God. Uh, a question that I had for the two of you, because I'm still on the fence about it. Do you think the having our main protagonist immediately be the target of the monster was that the right choice? Should it have spent? Should we have seen the monster killing more people before? Because mm-hmm. we got we got some of it right, like we but we got it through. Like newspaper clippings Talking. and narration through, hey, yeah. boyfriend, boyfriend went and did some research, so here's a driving right. scene info dump. Yeah. We're going to visit the dude, like the yeah. one guy known to survive it. Like, yeah. 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 We got it's some like... backstory to the monster. I yeah. honestly thought it was a good move because the way they pulled it off well. Like, you know, it made sense with her scene the chick kill herself and like the curse passing on. Cause that was the whole way yeah. that it, you know, that's how it, that's how it went about. You know, you had to pass it to somebody else. Yeah. So I felt like it only it's doing it that way. And the fact that you do it early in the game, you know, leads the rest of the movie gives you an opportunity to build that tension. as Everything progresses. So yeah. I honestly thought it was the right move. I, I don't think they could have played it much better than that. Um, and I'll yeah. be honest, dude, like, when that chick, like the chick who killed herself in the beginning, scared the shit out of me because yeah, her up. scream was so random. Mm-hmm. Like when she started freaking out, screaming, and like fell on the chair because she saw the smile. Mm-hmm. At that point, we hadn't seen the smile. Mm-hmm. But she just randomly starts screaming, like blood curling scream. I'm like, holy fuck! Like that, now, that, that shook me for a second. Like holy shit! Do you do you two th- th- do you two think that she, the first girl, saw the full form, crazy smiling? demon monster like right in there or what do you think she that's saw the there? thing dude i you don't even know if that's like the true form yeah that's like, like that could be knows. something we might find out in the later in the franchise yeah because like, yeah because it could be like end, a good thing dude everyone could see something different yeah you yeah, know what and, i'm saying yeah and at the end when it like literally tore its face off and it was like multiple mouths and like it was like totally wild it's yeah, like it was weird anything. looking, dude, for sure. And but that yeah. could have just been like her, or like her visual, like her mm-hmm. version of it. Like somehow yeah. her fears made it look like that. It could have been know. her dead dad smiling. And but like Kev said, we didn't really get to see enough of the monster to really know what the monster is. Yeah. You know, all we know is it's a curse and it smiles on motherfuckers. That's all <laughs> we really know. Like that's all we as know. far as like the true form, like we have no idea. Yeah. And, and we thought it was a fucking clown, and then come to find out some alien spider, bro. Threw yeah. everybody for a loop. Yeah, you know right. What I'm saying, still who knows what it really is. That's right. <laughs> but never you know what's, what's funny is I just thought of it. <laughs> like they kept saying that the monster, when she was running off, like oh, the monster feeds on trauma and needs that trauma. But if I'm away from people, nothing. But what it also fed on. And what's so hard to beat it is it feeds off of human compassion because there's always going to yeah. be somebody trying to follow the other to see if they're okay. So yeah. really it's hard, unless you get that A for any of Airbnb in the desert, <laughs> you're going to have your boyfriend <laughs> rolling up on you trying to get that last jerk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that is an, an interesting uh, part about it's what makes I guess, I don't know, that's like the tragedy of it that I think yeah. makes it compelling because maybe not everyone can. There are a lot of people that can just relate to the trauma alone, and that part will resonate, and that will be enough for them to like really root for anybody who gets afflicted by this. But I think we can all, almost everyone, everyone who doesn't have like a sociopath or psychopath kind of personality disorder like we all know what it's like to care for somebody and try to help somebody out of a situation yeah and so when you think about i wish i knew uh the ex- hunky ex-boyfriend cop's name uh but i don't so i'm just gonna keep calling him that i can't uh, remember either because they, un- sh- they showed his name so many times on text and everyone yeah. i don't think 
because as a cop, you know, one way or another, you know that dude's seen the trauma. But that, because that is one of the things that I've asked myself when we talk, because we got our little info dump from the dude who somehow learned, and I, yeah. I still don't know how he quite well, figured he, out. And I think he explains it, but I just need to re- like how he killed. He killed. But someone he else. was really quick. Like it was really yeah, fast. It, it was like rushed it was it like, and, and then remember when he was like. I saw that there was another strand in Brazil and I saw this and it was like, why don't you? Yeah. It was just like really quick. Like we just need to put that scene in there. Yeah, exactly. And I just, I don't know how, uh, like, so one of the questions to get to my point, I guess, one of the questions I had is like, well, what happens if someone witnesses that suicide? Well, I guess that is the trauma. I guess witnessing mm-hmm, the suicide right. is enough trauma. Yeah. Because I'm just like, well, what if, like, what if he just runs into a sheltered rich kid one day who's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, whatever, brother. Like, what are you talking about? Because, like, because I, remember, I got nothing for you. You got nothing yeah, on me, smiley ghost. Yeah, because Rose <laughs> at the beginning. Smiley <laughs> ghost. SG. I don't even, I can't even spell trauma, dog. I'm rich. Like, what? That's like, <laughs> what the fuck is a trauma? Doesn't that bro? beat it? Like, yeah, wouldn't a country club membership just trump this thing? I don't, I don't understand. Just got deep down inside, never to think about again. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what that girl was, though. Like, Rose was like, she had that buried issues with her mom and everything. But it's like, but she was doing fine. I think she would have lived her whole life if she wouldn't have seen that horrible suicide. Yeah. If she would have lived her whole life totally normalized and working 80 hours. <laughs> but yes. that, like, seeing her kill herself, like that girl, she just, like, totally the trauma just like that monster just got in was, uh, but i but i also wonder like they made it seem like it was random like okay the monster just goes to the next and goes but it, but the monster hones in on the weak links like weak people right because you're not going to get like a motivational speaker like i have no closet for like skeletons in my closet Man, you know, i don't know i it would th- i mean that's kind of in nature right most predators mm-hmm. We would go after the week, so yeah, that would, that would track. Ooh, because maybe that's why the the dude, her fiance, wasn't um, manipulated because he was pretty solid. Remember, because he 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 brought up how he was like looking into her background and her family history, and you know, yeah, the I forgot about that. Yeah, he was a douche, yeah. wasn't he? So he was a douche, but he he was like supposedly normal yeah a traumaless douche yeah like he <laughs> traumaless douche maybe was he the protagonist is that the message of this movie was like just don't fucking care about people was that the movie it's like if you care about people you're gonna watch your ex-girlfriend burn herself alive and get chased yeah. by a demon so be the shitty boyfriend yeah who doesn't care that's did the that's just, the message did he just leave he left right he rolled out i think so i don't remember what happened to him he never even really said, fuck you, I'm out. Like, he was just like, I can't deal with this right now. Well, let's be honest. Follow-up question. Well, okay, first a statement. Mustache is the greatest name for a cat I've ever heard. So shout out to whoever came up with that. <laughs> or mustache. Second, are either of y'all staying another night in a house with a woman who gave her nephew her dead cat as a birthday present? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not. No way. That's a deal breaker, bro. Yeah. I don't give a shit if you if my girlfriend decides she's giving dead animals to someone for their birthday like that's a deal breaker like I, I can't get past that like I can't yeah. cuddle with you knowing that you just killed Sparky bro you know what? Your little, little niece the, or whatever like I'm, the, I'm cool right, I gotta go the, I gotta go bro the fourth or fifth smile when they run out of like you know with the monster they will have Jackson be the killer. The, like that kid grew up to be fucked up. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm gonna kill yeah. everybody. Else. Yep, it's gonna come no, back to him. Kind of, I could see that being a smile five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Little, little yeah. Jack grows up and he's yeah. the Tommy Doyle of smiles. Because, because think about it really yeah. quick, Jack from <laughs> Jackson witnesses, witnessed his mom do some crazy shit because yeah. her sister killed herself, and now yeah. his mom's all fucked oh, up. Oh yeah, her sister, his, his mom bro. could kill her. Yeah, because yeah. think about that. Yeah, the mom, his mom went through that same trauma. They talk about mm-hmm. it. And just yeah. think about that. Your mom and now your sister, and then think about like her son went through that weird shit he's probably gonna start killing animals too yeah and uh, the sister said that jackson was so traumatized 
but that little bastard wasn't traumatized enough not to look out the motherfucking window. Yeah, he was creepy looking out the window, though. Wasn't he was he? creepy looking out that window. He wasn't playing <laughs> he on was, PlayStation. Dude. Little young Jackson Myers. Creeping hard. No, but look at it from his POV. Literally on his birthday with all his family and friends, <laughs> he opens up a cat, dead cat. He holds it. And then the next thing he sees is her screaming bloody murder hitting her her <laughs> steering wheel. And then probably a few days later, oh, by the way, she's she burned herself alive and she's dead. That's his life right now. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I still can't I still can't get over him picking up the dead cat and holding it. I hope his mother, before she killed her, eventually kills herself, buys him a Detroit style pizza hut pizza or something get like stuffed crust or something yeah get him a stuffed crust pizza not one of those d- lasagna yeah, pizzas from yeah Detroit get the stuffed crust pizza and Chicago. some pepsi let him stay up late you know watch pet cemetery i don't know hey dudes fyi i'm gonna turn off my camera and mute my mic for a second i gotta hit this bathroom bro so i'm gonna okay. back do do your thing brother nice and now we get <laughs> to bad. see and that's a good time for a commercial break. This episode mm-hmm. brought to you by the musical stylings of Muff Daddy. You can check him out Please on do. Spotify. Mm-hmm. You can also check out Cosmic Jive on Spotify, which if you are listening, if you're watching this on YouTube, you've probably been listening to Cosmic Jive Beats for, I don't know, about the last hour. So mm-hmm. if you don't mind, uh, give that a subscribe as well. And also, Noah, do you want to pitch your music while we're here? Yeah, well, we're, um, every, every, we're all we're all musicians too. Let's do a music yeah. podcast next. Uh, go um, ahead. Confusion ends and no Noah. K N O W. Noah N O A H. <laughs> nice. And you're are you a Bandcamp guy? Where do they find you? I'm a Bandcamp guy and a Spotify guy. <laughs> One time on Bandcamp, I sold some albums. <laughs> yeah. Not that. <laughs> well, that is fantastic. <laughs> well, what what I. I I think we've covered a lot. You know what? I'm going to dust out my trusty notes because oh, yeah, please do. I have not turned to them yet. And we want to make sure we get to this everything. This is a good cherry right? on top. Yeah, cherry on top. Yeah. yeah, as we move towards the exit because we're at about yeah. half this movie's runtime. I'm going to have some cinnamon toast crunch and call it a night. Well, mm. while I watch Hollywood, yes. I love being Yes. In. We will be doing, yeah, I can't wait. It's going to be a long night. Long night of podcasting, though, so I love it. Um, oh, here's a note that I had that kind of goes back to what we were saying uh, mm-hmm. before. It says, so she believes in the curse, but won't stay away from her family to keep them safe. <laughs> yeah, I love this protagonist. Yeah, she believes in the curse, but goes to her nephew's fucking birthday party. Okay. Um, yeah, a lot gotta of... Comp- keep up appearances, bro. <laughs> yeah. Gotta keep up appearances. <laughs> uh, her sister looked. Her sister was the older sister, but looked a lot younger than her. Yeah, that's what I thought. It was weird. Yeah, weird the older sister that th- threw that one. I mm-hmm. did. I did put um, that uh, the cinematography. So I, I liked the dope. drone shots, the spinning drone shots. That, yeah, that drone shot. For outside of the hospital and then when it like went into the room and then just knock on the door that was like mm, very good yeah that was something i noticed out the gate i was mm-hmm. like oh wow the cinematography on this is dope like mm-hmm. i'd even told our friend olivia because she had seen me post about seeing it and i told her i was like yeah you'll definitely appreciate the cinematography because like the camera angles and the different shots they had like i like the up down shots upside yeah. down shots they yep. use for like the skylights on the yeah. bottom you know, like, I thought that shit was kind of cool. Like, I was cool. often. Yeah, I was like, I really did appreciate the cinematography on it a lot. Yeah. Like, in the score That's... and, like, the sound, like. The score, too, I think that they was did on there, yeah. Really good with all that, man. Right. Yeah, they did a good job with this, uh, the sound, like, like, build, 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 and then it just, like, crescendo, it just yep. crushes out and then goes somewhere else. Yeah. Yep, agreed. Like, the jump scares, even when you expected them, they still were scary because the sound was so crisp. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, and it, it, like you said, it built up very well to those. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I was impressed with it, man. Like I said, it's one of the better ones I've seen in a while. Because, I mean, I'd be doing a lot of the horror movies I do see. 
I don't usually love them because they're yeah. all are kind of just regurgitated at this point. But Absolutely. I do appreciate it when I see a, a fairly <laughs> fresh concept and someone executes it well. Like I can appreciate that. That's... So like. You know, we should convince Sean just don't even watch a trailer. Go into Barbarian in the theater next Tuesday. Just go see Barbarian. Sean, I don't know if I'll be able to check it in the theaters at this point. Because mm. uh, I'm already like, well, actually, I may because I'm going to watch Halloween tonight. So I'm not actually yeah. not going to see that now. So maybe that does open up to Barbarian. Barbarian would be worth it because if you like cinematography and original ideas like that movie, I would say, um, I think maybe you would disagree with me on this kev but like i think barbarian has better cinematography and shots considering the locale yeah, that they have it's up it there. was really yeah. cool and they do a lot of the same cool things like with the tracking shot i'm thinking specifically mm -hmm. noah in the flashback when he walks yes. out of his house and into his oh. car and i swear to god a uh, little behind the scenes you two will appreciate this i swear they had someone follow that dude with the camera rig as he got into the car and then they the camera follows him and it's like they handed the camera through the car window because then yeah. he gets he starts driving and it's just yeah. like oh shit dude it was, it was just, really cool so the cinematography was so great in that movie as well um sean yeah if you do watch it i think no and i have talked about 90 minutes about that movie but i would be more yeah. than happy to come back and talk to you about it some more yeah like, uh, there's just that much to talk about we could still do at least another 40 minutes um yeah i genuinely and i would watch that show just the two of you talking about it because i i want to know sean's opinion well you'll be uh, invited too man for sure okay um but yeah when it comes to this i did put you know that uh this I, I, my i'm always harsh you guys know this i like to have a drink in the theater so sometimes my critiques can be a little biting so what I said in my notes was, this is all sizzle and no steak. I don't think it was no steak, but I will say that the sizzle, being the cinematography, the soundtrack, all that stuff, greatly enhanced the steak. Uh, some of the jump scares really pissed me off, like when she was freaking out in her bed, and then they cut to fucking traffic in the morning, yeah. and it's just a loud car. That the Jump scares well, like that make me mad, because like you're not actually, it is an it is a human thing to like keep us safe back from when we were living in huts and jungles that like to have a sensory reaction to a loud noise. So just walking up behind me and banging a pot just makes me mad. So mm -hmm. while there were some great instances where it was done well, shit like that, that one scene in particular, like that, that one stuck with me and it pissed me off. So I yeah. wanted to mention it because I did like a non-spoiler version of the scene in another podcast. So anyway, sorry, Noah, go ahead. Oh no. Just, and then they added the whole rose, like on the cut with the traffic too. So they added the her name by the demon. So it was, it was kind of tacky. Oh, I forgot about the, that thing. I forgot yeah, about that. So they did, it, I think two times where they like, did a smash like a jump cut like sudden thing and then they would just put rose <laughs> like okay rose. <laughs> that's good i like that you should use that voice we gotta use that for something all right got, yeah in the recordings here they're like do you think it should be rose or rose <laughs> just I would do like the rose that, yeah. you asshole it's like no i think it sounds better if i hold the, the like a rat <laughs> well we are getting a lot for the outtakes section i think so we have cracked we are into an hour so i think it's probably about that time i could talk with you i mean i'm having fun i could talk with you guys for another hour but uh you know uh probably should start working us towards the yeah. exit so, uh, no, what you got? I saw a hand come I, up. I just have first? one last complaint about oh, Let's do an Ohio movie. goodbye. It's fine. We got like 20 one... more minutes. That's why I had no, to start I'm... saying it. Otherwise, we'll be here all night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do one complaint, one compliment. My one complaint, a lot of horror movies do this. When she went to visit that the wife of the dead guy, and she he had all, he drew all those drawings of the, the monster and the visuals, you know? Oh, yeah. And her name is like Victoria or something. They hit and all the beats. Why? Why in all the movies, like in the horror movies, like when all she did was say, "Hey, I've been doing research and I think it's connected," and then all of a sudden it's like, 
get the fuck out of my house. It's like, why? <laughs> like, why don't we I think play... she just struck a nerve, dude. Like... I know, but like, she wouldn't even hear out. And there's so many movies do that. It's like, get the fuck out of here. And and they're like calm, like, what did you say? And then all of a sudden, they just get super crazy about yeah. it. What kind of reporter what? are you? Yeah. Like, why don't we just... Like, <laughs> yeah. get... Why don't we get some DoorDash and we can talk about this for a while and I'll hear you out. Yeah. Dude, I got a Dash Pass. I'll get us some Chipotle right yeah. now. Yeah, I got some Dash out. Pass, Let's baby. Go, talk about it, bro. No delivery fees. What you want? That's right. <laughs> Nate, if, if we do like a horror movie like that with Supernatural, I want to put that in the scene like where like she gets <laughs> revved up and is like, get the fuck out and be like, yo. I'll order us some food, and then it just cuts them like eating wings. Like, so you're saying it's all connected, and like this is crazy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Drinking a milkshake and shit, chill. Yeah, love it. Oh, dude, I can't <laughs> well, dude, wait. Speaking of those drawings, though, whoever actually drew those is fucking super yeah. talented because yeah, those drawings were on point. I'm like, dude, those are all fresh. Yeah, yeah. and there were a lot of them too. Yeah, a lot. A lady love. sitting on a on a fucking multi-million dollar art collection she just got it locked in her yeah. attic because she yeah know, didn't want to look at it it's like god damn dude you got some well that's what some I was classics so up there yeah. lady that's what i was so confused about because she kept that room intact you know for her dead husband and all those creepy drawings and everything you're not gonna you're not gonna sit there and listen to this woman you know <laughs> like <laughs> tell what she knows at all just like get the hell out of here okay it did seem weird like the the prison dude freaking out mm -hmm. yeah, that made so sense. much sense because yeah because like, he doesn't want to deal with yeah, that yeah get her out of here yeah but that like, lady you came here with that no, you yeah, yeah. you came here <laughs> yeah it makes perfect sense. get her away from me get that's her the away worst example that. of my friend has it <laughs> like, as, no, you have it. <laughs> as soon as he did that I, my head immediately went to early seasons of arrested development when george senior's in prison and they always say, no touching no, no touching. touching no touching yeah, no touching why what are you doing get that's... away from me no touching <laughs> oh god i know what i'm that's the last thing i'm gonna put on repeat tonight daddy horny michael uh... well... <laughs> 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 oh god yeah, dude, oh, yeah. like you want to watch the one, oh, one day we'll review that yeah. for a throwback review but yeah the <laughs> the drawings were cool i do love that i forgot that they did hit a lot of the the beats we had yeah. the the guy who's faced it before but had to mm -hmm. do something evil to get away from it we had the, the struggling widow yeah this with the creepy room. combined with the the person who draws it because that immediately took me back to like bird box Mm -hmm. Remember they had the some yeah. people would go crazy and like would that one dude was like drawing the shit and I'm like this is a this is a trope. The only thing they mm -hmm. didn't do was find like the guy in the basement, you know, like the nerd right. who had the secret and you know they had the they even had the detective solve yeah. the mystery and tell you about it in the car. It's like, man, y'all hit for for an original concept. They managed to hit a lot of the you, paint by numbers beats. Um, you, you know what? One trope they did not put in the movie though is they absolutely to up the body count in that movie when she when rose rolled up to the childhood home they could have had a few squatters in there and then the smile people just like the smile monster just annihilates them right? well but they that's the nature of it though there can't mm. be a high body count though right because it, oh, it, yeah. it's doing it one at a time right because that's true in order to get to the homeless guys it would have had to kill her in right. front of them oh, which that's right. yeah. which is a corner so i wonder like, if they will paint themselves into a corner exactly like at some point oh, you know, I, are you gonna be able to do six movies about this no you know, know on smiles dude smiles is gonna be like aliens to aliens. gonna find yeah, out like there's it's a virus yeah it's like actually be, yeah this lady and gamed herself in front of four people you, and now you got to get your smile vid shot <laughs> and you're gonna be safe from the smile i can't think of a clever uh pun on vaccine which is probably yeah. good probably don't need that getting clipped out and put on the internet so yeah i'm, I'm good uh, <laughs> grin, grin scene <laughs> well i can tell you mm. lovely folks at home that one of if not hopefully all three of us well we'll all be talking with you soon very soon about halloween ends now whether or not it ends is another story hopefully 
you'll have this same trio together. We may uh, have two separate conversations that we merge, but the only way you'll know is if you are fucking subscribed, my dude. So please subscribe. Yeah. Hit some bells for notifications if that's your thing. Uh, if you're listening to the audio podcast, uh, follow. It's a it's a different button with the same function. So we yeah. appreciate you. Any farewell words from Noah or Sean? Thank you both for coming, by the way. I want to make sure I say that. Thank Thanks you. for having us, kid. Appreciate you. I had a, I had a blast with you guys, man. I really Me did. Too. Appreciate you. Yeah. I will just say they should merge Smile with Halloween, and then the Smile Monster fucks with Michael Myers because of his trauma. <laughs> that would be wild. Who would win on that? That would be crazy. Meet Canyon, if you're watching. Yeah. And I'm sure you are, because what else you got to do? Draw that. Draw that, man. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Man. I would be sick to see, like, a Michael Myers mask with a big-ass smile. Oh. Oh, wow. be sick. We're going to do it. We're going to put it yeah, in fellas. AI. It's been real. It's been fun. It's been real fun, man. I'm looking forward to next time, D fellas. I'm All sure right. we'll touch base soon on this Halloween, Doug. Oh, I can't wait.